If I've learned anything from my previous life as a professional couples figure skater, it's the power of pairs. And that power can also be utilized on a guitar. So the pair that we're gonna talk about right now is gonna be the D and the G string in the key of C. We're gonna be able to do all sorts of cool stuff. It's gonna sound like this to start off with. Just some kind of cool little things we're doing with just the D and the G string. Really the ultimate pair, much like the world-renowned Anna Hubler and Heinrich Berger of the 1908 Olympics, the first year that couples figure skating was an Olympic event. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by some practical things you could do to add your playing right now, and then by the end of this video, we're gonna get into some modes and talk about the music theory behind why the D string and the G string are so closely related. And we're gonna do all this with this Court guitar. Court Gold A6, Court has sponsored this video, so if you're interested, I will link you in the description. But let's get to it, all right? Now I said we're, we're playing in the key of C. The notes in the key of C are super easy, there's no sharps or flats. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now why you want to know those notes on just the D and the G string all the way down the neck is because you really get some awesome opportunities for double stopping, okay? So first we're just gonna learn like the first five frets where these notes are. D open is a D, right? So it's really if we play the notes in C, starting on a D, we're starting on an open D, we go to the second fret to get an E, the third fret to get an F, and the fifth fret to get a G. D, E, F, G. Now for the G string, that leads us to a G, right? So open G right here. Second fret is A, fourth fret is B, and the fifth fret is C. Okay, so all together we'd have the D string open, two, three, five, and on the G string open, two, four, five. So the only difference is the third fret on the D string and the fourth fret on the G string, okay? So, 3D, 4G. Other than that, they're the same all the way down, okay? So, but first of all, let's talk about this little, this this crazy guy right here. This, this crazy character. Reminds me of my own couple's figures. I never won the gold, never made the Olympic trials. Could never find the right partner. I was always trying to trying to match up with a with a sexy tritone and we just it just never would have worked out but anyways this right here doesn't sound great right but we're gonna skip over that for now we're gonna come back to it okay so we're gonna double stop through these two pairs right these two these strings open and open is D and G two and two we have the next two notes here's that that nasty one brings back terrible, terrible memories. Put some good memories to it. And then the fifth fret, right there. So if we skip the ugly one, we just get open, open, two and two, five and five, okay? This is something that you can add to your playing right away. No matter what chord progression you're doing in the key of C, that little thing is something you can do in between chords, maybe at the end of phrases. What I was doing in the beginning of the lesson here was like an A minor. C, G, then A minor. And then just going from the second fret to the fifth fret, okay? We can look at these a lot of different ways. We can look at this as maybe even part of like a C major chord or a C power chord or something like that. But I think of thinking of these in pairs, a great thing that you can do. Any chord progression in the key of C. That was just A minor, C, G. Let's flip it around. Let's make it like D minor to F. It's always gonna work There's a lot of different ways that you can slide these in there, right? You can do them with like lead playing and stuff, which we'll talk about later maybe. But I wanted to start focusing on just those first five frets. Now, the easy part is actually the next part because the fifth fret to the 12th fret, again, the 12th fret is the octave. So if open is D, the 12th fret, 
usually wear like the double dot or the inlay like this chord has. This, this beautiful sculpted inlay on the 12th fret. Oh my gosh, what a guitar, All right? That's the same note, okay? D to D, G to G. So we're gonna talk about all the notes, but from five to, to 12, I wanna just mirror the exact same thing. So remember, we ended up on the fifth fret of the D string, which is G, to continue forward, A would be the seventh fret, B would be the ninth fret. That's really easy because they're all dotted frets, right? The even, uh, the odd numbers are dotted until you get to the 12th fret. So we have five, seven, nine, 10, 12. Okay, now these notes would be G, A, B, C, D, but we can mirror that on the G string. Okay, so even though the intervals, the frets are the same, the notes are different. Now we're starting with a C. Again, the fifth fret on the G string is a C. C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so we can play them one at a time. Five, seven, nine, twelve, or nine, ten, twelve. Five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Or together. All of that is fair game in this key, right? So the interesting thing about the open D string and the open G string, or even more specifically, D's place in the C scale and G's place in the C scale is they're only separated by one note. It's that it's the third, the major or minor third, okay? Again, we're gonna talk about the modes and the theory, but we still got a few more minutes to just jamming because Let's pair these up all the way through the neck, right? So open and open, two and two, three and four. Now we just follow the dots. Five, seven, nine, 10, 12. So we're kind of getting like a cool harmony here, right? You can even put like a little rhythm to it. Create some tension. back to that wild tension, which is just as palpable as the tension between figure skating partners who are not married to each other and have other spouses. That's gotta be weird, right? Every time you see a paired figure skating, you, you feel like, obviously these, these two are a thing. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, that's why I got into it in the first place. Obviously, right? Anyways, I don't know. I was not long for that world, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So. This stands to reason with bar chords and stuff too. We don't have to always just go open chords. Which is kind of fun, you know, like let's maybe focus in on the ninth, 10th, and 12th frets. Because remember, like I said, those are all fair game. We could go from like a C to a G to a C. C. Just using that as like, oh, this is something interesting that I could do maybe in between. You know, it's not it's not too difficult. The, the nice thing about these open chords in the key of C is usually two of these fingers are gonna be right next to each other. Like I usually play a C slash G. So my ring finger, my pinky are gonna be next to each other. So I can just kind of slap that on really any of these, any of these guys, pair it up. A minor, right? You got your middle finger and your ring finger next to each other. You could run this all the way down like that. That's, that's great practice right there. A minor, skip that tritone, go to the fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, 10th fret, 12th fret. You can even get that open A to kind of drone in, right? stuff around A minor that you can do, all right? So, now that we've talked about how these the D and the G string relate to each other, again, the only difference here is that third note, either way, uh, a good way to kind of like really conceptualize that is to just play the intervals all the way through. So like, open, two, three, 
five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Open to four, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Okay? You kind of get an ear for it. And that's what's going to bring us to the modes. All right? Uh, modes scare people off a lot of the time. Understandably so, because there's a lot of information, and the information kind of moves, and you're trying to keep one thing straight, but then another thing comes in. Just like pulling off a, a double axle when you're totally depending on, on a partner who can't pull their weight, eh, lets you fall to the ground and concuss yourself on the ice. It's the same thing, thinking about the modes. Uh, let's talk about it, right? All the mode is is like, all right, play the C scale starting on D. Well, we already did that, right? So we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. You can think of them as intervals. You can think of them as frets, right? I think when you're first starting out, it's easier to think as frets. It's almost easier to memorize. Open two, three, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. The more you play, though, I think the easier it is to remember the intervals because you can kind of hear them. You can't hear the numbers on a fretboard, right? Eventually you can, but what you're hearing are the intervals, right? You don't hear open two, three, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. You hear and the spacing, the interval there is what gets it. And the name of that interval is the Dorian scale, okay? D Dorian, the second degree in the key of C. All that means is you're playing the C scale starting on a D, right? So a lot of times we learn them in a different direction, right? You might be like, okay, here's D's shape. It's like minor with a sharp six, minor with a major six. This is how you get the notes in D Dorian, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, okay? Which is totally right. Uh, I remember I memorized that before I really knew what it meant. Uh, but we can do the same thing with G, right? So G, open to four, five, seven, nine, ten. It's the same thing, but with a major third instead of a minor third. Makes a huge world of difference in the chord building world, which we're going into right now, right? Which is similar to the mode world. Just like, uh, you know, singles skating is similar to couples, but there's a lot of nuance that, uh, that goes really unappreciated. But not by me, because we're going to keep going. So D's chord in this key would be D minor, right? Now, what makes it different than the other minor chords, why D minor is not like the other girls, is because it has a major six in it, right? If we go one, two, three, four, five, six, the difference between open and nine is what it would be in the D major scale, okay? Same with G, we know the G's chord in this key is G major, right? But what makes this a special kind of major chord is actually the seventh note. It goes G, A, B, just like a regular major chord. One, two, three, four, five. There's that major six. Seven. It has a minor seven, a flat seven. That's what makes it a G dominant seven in the key of C, right? So it's a major chord with a little bit of minorness in it. It's the bad boy of the key. It's just like I was known as the bad boy on the couple's figure skating circuit. Very bad, very bad boy. As well, I was known as a bad skater, but also a bad boy. Just like that G7. Ooh, that's a bad, bad boy. That's why he's in the blues. He's a bad boy, that guy. Just like D minor. D minor's a good girl with a little sauce. G7's bad boy. That's why they make a pair. The whole point of this lesson, we just arrived at it. <laughs> this is a D minor and G major are a lot more alike than they are dislike. And isn't that beautiful when we compare it to the context of the world outside of couples figure skating, all right? So G major is a G, a B, and a D. All right, if we extend that chord to a G7, it's a G, a B, a D, and an F. Okay? D minor is a D in F and an A. If we extend that to a D minor seven, we would get a D, an F, an A, 
and a C. Okay, so between all these, we're getting really the all, all the notes that you want to get in that C major scale, right? And eventually what we get, what I just played there, was the two chord, which leads us, D minor seven, to the five chord, G7, which leads us home. A two, five, one. And we've just discovered jazz music, everybody. Oh my gosh, two, five, one. And all this was hidden. You didn't even know this before. The D and G string, the secret slide with these two open strings that are sitting right next to each other. And all you have to do is start pairing them together and thinking how that they're super, super alike, right? as far as kind of like the vibe and the feel of it. All that's different is that third. One of them just happens to be major. Pretty boy grew up in the city on the right side of the tracks. One of them happens to be minor, right? Down and, down and out girl from a broken family. But somehow they have that minor seven and that major six that they share in common and they make a beautiful, beautiful couple that just happens to be terrible at figure skating. Why did they choose to be figure skaters is the real question there. But there was a lot of love there, and there still is, and there always will be, right? So that is the similarity between the D Dorian mode and the G Mixolydian mode, okay? Again, a lot of, a lot of people get turned off by the modes, but just stick with me. We're bringing it all together, all right? Now, if I were to play the, let's, just, let's do G Mixolydian, okay? And we'll do three, three notes to string for all you crazy people out there. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If I do it on the lower string, it goes three, five, seven, three, five, seven, three, five. Super symmetrical shape, right? Now, I can make one minor adjustment, right? Remember that major third is four frets, two whole steps. I can do the exact same thing, but now I'm gonna same thing with a flat three right there, a minor third. And now I want from G Mixolydian to G Dorian. And then it's like, oh, G Dorian, well, that's interesting. That's a minor chord in the key of F. Okay, so we just discovered here is that maybe like a D minor to a G, other than just being a two, five, one, to the home key, jazzy style. We could do a two to a five, maybe a minor five, as a portal into a target key of F, okay? So there's a lot that you can actually learn from just thinking of like, wow, these are just two notes that like, you know, I always knew they were next to each other, but once we kind of expand them out, through the fretboard and use just a, like easy music theory. We're just taking like the same notes in that key in that C scale, but pairing them together across one string in a way that is super symmetrical. It's so easy to remember because you just have to remember that the third one lands on that nasty tritone. Just remember your boy Sean and his and his long lost star-crossed figure skater lover, as beautiful as she was lethal at skating. That guy right there, that girl right there. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of revelations in this video here. Open, two and two, three and four, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve. Right, we start thinking of that, it's like, all right, these are intervals that go well together. I can pair these. Keep rocking out in the key of F, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite keys. That's a side, side story for another, a tale for another time. We have sadly run out of time for this lesson, but thank you to Court for sponsoring this lesson, sending over the A6. We're gonna have some more with this guitar very, very soon. If any of this confused you, check out the Patreon because I go through in much greater detail about all the minutia of music theory that. You know, maybe you want to learn from the ground up. And the thing about talking about it in these YouTube videos is like, ah, you know, I, I kind of want to spend more time on this, but I don't want to make a, a five hour video. So on Patreon, they're bite sized lessons that take you from absolute beginner to absolute slayer by the end of it. So definitely uh, check out this core A6 guitar. 
check out the Patreon. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. And uh, please feel free to uh, watch the Winter Olympics and thank your boy when those those paired figure skaters go out there because uh, I'll be out there watching under that same beautiful night sky. Thank you very much.